Good day, everyone, and thank you for having me back for another Daily Shave. Hope you've been blessed. Excited about this shave because I got a lot of new items in the den today, and uh, maybe one or two familiar items, but most are new. So I think I'll start with the soap first. I'll give you a couple details about each item, get right into the lathering process because you know how long it takes me to do that. So the soap for today is going to be Two Kings by Noble Otter. So Noble Otter is an artisan out of Houston, Texas. They started back in 2017. It's a tallow-based soap. It's a two-person operation, a uh, gentleman by the name of Cody. I imagine the second person is his wife. Uh, Cody actually started out making bar soaps in the past. He was gifted a wet shaving kit some time ago for Christmas by his wife, fell in love with wet shaving. Because he was already a soap enthusiast, started making wet shaving soaps. It was a natural transition for him. And what birthed out of that was Noble Otter. So what's kind of interesting is um, the description on their site doesn't give you a lot of vivid details about their company, just some general items. But what's kind of interesting is he did say that the actual otters themselves are supposed to tell a story. And so here you see two kings, but the description actually alludes to the fact that you should be able to look at this label and by virtue of looking at it, you should be able to get a general sense of what the experience is going to be with the soap as far as fragrance and other items like that. And so I think it's a pretty cool idea. Um, this soap smells a lot like powder to me. Um, I don't know that I would get that from the label itself, but it does have a label that kind of represents nobility. And so, Maybe there's something to say about that. I don't know. Maybe there's some things I don't know. But um, I like the idea of that. I have one other soap called Noir et Vanille from Noble Otter. Very popular in the community. Amazing fragrance if you haven't checked that one out. That's available at West Coast Shaving too. That's a scent if you haven't started with Noble Otter that I would probably check out first. But this one smells like powder. It's been blooming. I just dumped it out. Here's the actual scent notes. It's black currant, citrus, jasmine, lily of the valley, rose, carnation, incense, oud, sandalwood, and oak moss. So it's quite a few uh, scent notes in there, but I smell powder, like baby powder, Johnson & Johnson's baby powder. So maybe that'll intensify. As I smell it some more, because now it's been bloomed, I'm picking up some back notes, but that's what I get from it. So there's that. My brush for today, I also have the matching splash, you know that. My brush for today is new. This is the Abate y la Mantilla Bore Brush. So I've heard great things about this brush. This is what I would describe as a premium bore brush. Very densely packed bore knot, very soft. It's been soaking for quite a while. Still has that bore funk to it. And then on the bottom, you can see the AYLM, the Abate y la Mantilla Insignia in that cross, which I think is pretty cool looking. It's got good heft. It feels and looks premium. I like bore and synthetic primarily. So I'm excited to use this. So this is softened up quite a bit, but I can tell it's gonna be a little bit of a rough go being it's first shave. And then today's razor, of course, is my brand new go-to, my above the tie M1 head. The blade was actually recommended to me by a viewer. So an avid viewer named Anthony Ferruli. And thank you, Anthony, so much for the recommendation. And that goes for anyone. Um, we've got a whole series of videos. We've got a whole lineup and cast of characters, all the different shavers, all great guys, all great individuals that bring a different flavor to their videos. Reach out to your favorite shavers, whoever they are. And if there's something you'd like us to try, if there's something that you'd like to recommend to us, something that you maybe haven't seen a video on yet or something that you think would enhance our experience, let us know. Um, I get PMs um, sometimes um, after my videos, after people watch, they PM, make recommendations. Uh, they'll tell me they tried the product that we reviewed. Uh, they'll ask questions. I mean, that's what this series is all about. It's designed really to help folks, to enhance your experience, uh, and even for you guys to help us out a little bit. And so. Uh, thank you, Anthony, for reaching out. And again, any of you um, that watch this series, like a certain person's videos or like multiple people's videos, feel free to PM us and, and make those recommendations. And you know, this blade, this Nasset, I tried it one other time. This is the blade I'm using today. Um, I don't remember what my experience was, but I've heard good things about this blade. And so I'm excited to revisit it. And thanks to Anthony, I'm gonna use it today. So thank you, Anthony, for that. Again, anyone, reach out to your favorite shaver, make those recommendations and uh, it's, it's much appreciated. So that's my setup for today. I'm gonna go ahead and get this soap loaded. The brush, actually. So I'm excited to use this. So bore brushes, they have a break-in cycle. And it's usually somewhere between 20 and 30 shaves, depending on how you load and what type of soaps you load, the properties in those soaps the types of hairs, the density of the hairs, there's all kinds of different factors that will help you or actually determine what the break-in process is gonna be. So you have Samogues, to me, have very different bore knots than Omegas. You've got Zeniths, you've got one-offs like this. 
Fader now has a bore brush that I got for Christmas. I'll feature in one of my videos. So it's good to know. And there's also a shedding process. So right now I just lost a hair. But typically anywhere from five to 10 hairs you'll shed. That's usually pretty typical and normal over the course of maybe the first 10 shaves. If you're shedding a lot, that means that the knot itself wasn't tied and glued correctly. So you shouldn't lose a lot of hairs. Just saying. So I'm loading this up pretty good because boar can really take it. And I like the backbone on boar as opposed to badger. And that's one thing I'm gonna to try to conquer and master through this series is badger brushes. I do have a handful of badger knots, not a big fan. They don't seem to dispense lather as good as my synthetics and bores. They do seem to be a bit more finicky and they're a lot more expensive. And I like variation. So, or variety rather. So I'm loading this up pretty good. I think that should be plenty, but again, it's new. So I really wanted to get a good amount of soap in there. I may have overloaded per the usual. Let me go ahead and wet the face. So it was nice to go on the website, read a little bit more about Noble Otter. You know, it's me branching out a bit. And as you know, I was going through my fine series of soaps. I still haven't revealed to you which my favorite, which of the fine soaps is my favorite fragrance. That will be in an upcoming video, probably the next one. Uh, but I still have three or four more fragrances from fine to review. This was a one-off for me. I do have, like I said, one other Noble Otter soap. So I, I have my four or five artisans that I buy from primarily, as you know. But then once in a while, I'll have a one-off here or there of a fragrance I just really enjoyed or heard great things about or had a terrific experience with, or maybe it's the only fragrance I like in that lineup. Could be any number of factors. But Noble Otter is pretty good stuff. Really nice and creamy. What you'd expect from a tallow-based soap. Very thick. So now, as I've lathered it, I'm getting more of a citrusy powder scent. But right off the tub, right off the puck, dry, unused, it smells like Johnson & Johnson's baby powder, to me. And I might have one of those weird sniffers, you know? It's amazing how you can pass around a soap to different shavers and everybody gets a different impression. Okay, that's about good enough. You can see in there, it's a very creamy base, comes together beautifully. It's kind of an off-white looking base when you see the actual soap itself when it's uh, solidified form. So it's nice, I like the packaging. And it was great to kind of read up about the otters. I had no idea that they other than that was the name, or maybe they were otter lovers, I had no idea. It doesn't, like I said, there's no vivid description in there as to why Noble Otter is the actual name they came to. But it does allude to the fact that the otters do represent something on the labels, so that's kind of cool. So, and you know, to me, this is the actual splash, but you know, the artwork is great, attention to detail is great. And this does look like a premium soap. It looks like a premium soap base. So by looking at it, I feel like I'm going to enter into a premium shaving experience. Just saying packaging, the more and more you talk to shavers, you'll find out, and I think artisans are listening, that packaging is a big deal. I've used um, some soaps and others have too, where the packaging is not the greatest and it might deter you from using it because it looks like maybe something someone put together in their fifth bedroom or in their basement or in their backyard. And again, presentation is usually the most alluring thing. Not for everyone, but I'd say for a lot of folks. Now, the other dynamic I'm having here is I'm getting the boar funk with the scent of soap. So I'm smelling the soap now just by itself and I do smell some of that citrus coming through. There was, I wanna say one or two citrus notes in the soap. But again, first impressions right off the bat, right off the tub, powder.
and this might be very risky on my part using a brand new knot with a very thick soap. Still very pasty and I just dipped it in a ton of water. So I'm hoping that this works. The other thing, if I had more time, because I just got all of these items today, is the break-in process on Badger and on Boar. More so with Boar. There's several different techniques that can be employed. But there's one that I kind of liked uh, that I got from a Nick Shaves video. He soaks the brush for a while. Hot water, I believe, or really warm water. And then what he'll do is he'll lather up vigorously his favorite fragrance of soap, and then he lets it sit for 24 hours. So you let it sit just like this for 24 hours, and that's supposed to really speed up the break-in process. So I did it once before, it seemed to work okay. Um, and it gives, it gives you that good fragrance on the knot so you're not smelling the funk. Because this, this one really has it. But that's to me is good because that means that um, the actual hairs themselves are not as processed. And so that could be a good thing. I think you get more premium knots that way when you get the actual natural hairs. I mean, they clean them and all that stuff, sterilize them, I'm sure. Here's hoping. But to me, the funk is a sign of a really good premium knot, in my own opinion. When it doesn't have the funk, it may have gone through a very rigorous processing and I don't know if that impacts the shave or the knot itself. Like Samog, for example, dyes their knots. People didn't used to like that in the past and now it's like they're figuring out that that process itself actually softens up the hairs even more. All right, folks, I'm gonna try to add some more water. It's coming together, but it's still quite a bit pasty. Adding a ton of water in there and it's still very thick soap, feels good on the face. But now it's starting to do what I want it to do. Look how beautiful that lather's coming together. This knot size, I didn't even look at it. And there's the other thing. Here's the packaging that comes in this really nice box and inside it comes wrapped in this really nice, kind of like a satin cloth. The presentation is nice. If you've ever used Abate Le Mantia soaps, I know Matthew, um, Matt Borkin did a video on one of their soaps. I don't know if there's other ones out there, but if you see their soaps, they come in like a box wrapped in string. Presentation's really nice. It's almost got like Martin de Condre type of uh, containers, the glass with that kind of mason jars type of lid. And uh, I hear it's a very good formula. So the presentation's excellent. It kind of screams premium brand. And so the brush is no exception. If this is not a 26 millimeter, I'd be shocked. Um, but the handle size is great. I have really big hands. I'm digging this. Um, as this breaks in some more, I can tell this is gonna be a really nice knot. Okay, this is it, folks. I'm just gonna go with this. It's pretty good, though. Knowing me and the length of my videos, I'm probably not the prime guy for challenge videos, just because they'll take me that much longer. But this soap came together nice. And again, I feel like I smell like powder. But look at that, nice and thick. All right, let's get to it. See what these Nasset blades are all about. Again, I use these one other time I like these, Anthony. It's 
pretty smooth. I actually like these more than the uh, Blue Diamond. I think the allure on the Blue Diamond for me is the packaging more than anything. I love the packaging on those. I like that holographic diamond. Well, boy, this is one efficient blade. My goodness. And maybe it just pairs well with this head. That was nice, nice and smooth. I didn't feel a thing. It seemed to be quite sharp. I think it's gonna be safe to say that I'm gonna pick up more of these. Got a box of five right now. These are very sharp, very efficient. Very smooth. And with all that, when you clump it together and do a summation, it means comfort. Very comfortable on my mustache. That's always the real test area for me is because my most sensitive area is up there. And my most difficult to get is my mustache area. But yeah, I'm digging these. Yeah, first pass, really liking that blade. All right, just rinsing off real quick, go to my second. That is a really, really nice blade. And the way I measure that is by the friction I get on my face. So some blades, like that blue diamond, there's a little bit of friction. It's not quite as smooth. You feel a little bit of roughness sometimes with some blades. And with this one, I didn't. I got myself, I didn't, I didn't even feel that. Interesting. Always in that same spot too. Whenever I get myself, it's right there and right there, every single time. And I don't know if it's just the contours of my face or what it is. The other thing too is the second pass through, the painting on this knot is ridiculously good. Every time I deviate from bore and use exclusively synthetic, I mean, synthetic is great, don't get me wrong. And then I come back to bore and I start to think like, why did I ever digress? Bore so, this knot is nuts. I'm digging this shave, folks. Really nice. Very, very nice. I'll tell you the other thing I've noticed. I'm pretty positive, because as I look at other people's videos, we've got a great lineup of people in this series. 
and we all watch each other's videos. I think I'm the only guy that ever nicks himself. And yet they let me keep shaving. Gotta come in at that angle. There it is. I mean, my goodness, I'm looking at the base of that cut. It's a little dinky microscopic thing and it's bleeding like I got shot in the face. My gosh, weepers just annoy me. I don't know why that is. Look at it. It's bleeding literally like I just got in a fight or something. Third annoying pass, only because of that. Goodness. Yeah, the paint on on this knot is crazy good. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. This is a knot I'm probably gonna be using all the time. Again, bore brushes are typically known for their affordability. They have great performance. Like I said, there is a, you have to have some patience with them. There's a break-in period, but they're fantastic performers. There's another West Coast shaving brush I bought some years back. I was talking to Abraham about it. I'm gonna try to use that in a few of my videos too. I've used it like three times in almost four years. And it's an exclusive for the Badger and Blade group when uh, West Coast shaving was doing that pretty heavily. And um, they were doing a brush in coordination with that group. And I got one, it was an anniversary one. And the actual handle itself is uh, clear acrylic and it's got gold flicks in it. Their 10th anniversary. Pretty great. One little spot. It keeps looking at me. Again, if you look at the base, it's a tiny, dinky, little microscopic thing. It's just bleeding and bleeding as though it's dying to be released from my body. This by far in my 34C have been my favorite heads for my mustache area. take care of this because it's driving me crazy. Who wants to just sit there and hemorrhage, you know? What it might be too, once in a while you get this like, I don't know, Anthony, it might be that blade maybe. It's brand new, it's very sharp. I don't feel a thing, which when you don't feel anything, when you don't feel the friction and you've got a lot of growth, that it tells you that the blade is actually extremely sharp. And this one is apparently. Cause now I'm getting all these little dinky, look at them right there on my neck. Oh well.
that has to do, this reminds me of my old days using Feather. So I like the, I just have to dial it in a little bit more. It was very light on my face, but I think because it's a new blade. But I can tell you folks right now, these cuts down here, I didn't feel them. It was very smooth, very effortless. I just gotta dial that blade in a little more. bottom side of my neck. The other thing too I've noticed because this razor is deceptively mild. It, I mean, it's super comfortable, very easy to use, and it's easy to get careless with it. And I've noticed that with razors that I have that are mild, it's very easy to apply some pressure accidentally or just get careless where other razors that you know are aggressive or are paired with a certain blade are going to be extremely aggressive. You're on your guard already protecting against those nicks. And with this razor, it is so comfortable that you don't feel anything. And paired with this blade, it's a nice combination. I like it. It's just deceptively mild. So I've got to dial that in a little better. shave. Let me get all of this off my face. some alum action going here. Anything else? All right. Gonna let that settle in for a minute. So, the subtext there is that this was just a pretty amazing soap. I mean, I already know what to expect from Noble Otter. This fragrance, the reason that we're featuring it today, it's going to be brand new. It's being released, I believe, the end of this week or the beginning of next. I don't remember, but it's brand new, so it's not available to the public yet. But it will be by the time you see this video, probably. And so, again, there's the labeling. Fantastic soap, again, and the other thing I think has happened as I'm letting this dry is with some of the new soap bases, so I remember just way in the beginning when I started doing this nearly four years ago, there was still that primary base of artisans that were available. Some of them, you probably know their names today. And as I think back, some of those artisans really had several iterations of their soap base. So some of them have gone through two, three, four, sometimes five or more different soap bases trying to perfect it, and I think the newer artisans that have started in the last few years, anywhere from 2016 and on, they've really capitalized on those experiences from the previous artisans, their mistakes, um, things that they've missed, uh, errors they've made, or feedback they've gotten from the community. And so we're seeing in initial offerings really good soap bases right out of the gate and really evolved in contemporary soap bases, you know, donkey fat, certain types of tallow, beef tallows. Uh, now we're getting goat's milk. We're getting into all kinds of things. Duck fat, you're seeing all these things kind of mixed together. And so that's what I'm seeing with today's artisans that they, I think they've really uh, been complimented by their predecessors and they're capitalizing on those lessons learned and they're bringing us good product right out of the gate where they don't have to go back and reformulate. So hopefully this has uh, rested. And I can put this splash on.
with ease. So lesson learned on this razor. And this blade combination. See, yeah, I got a bump there. Always have to be careful, regardless of how mild you think. I've had that happen with my 34C. There's folks that can shave with that blindfolded and never cut themselves. If anyone's gonna cut themselves, it's gonna be me. All right, get all that gunk off my hands and face. 31 minutes in. Same old story, folks. Here's the splash. You apply that. This, because of the scent notes and the properties of the shave or the actual aftershave itself, smells a bit like, um, like a liquor almost. It's very pleasant though. And this is not as powdery. I get a lot more citrus with this as well as the jasmine and some of the other properties. Really nice. All right, folks. Most of you have probably jumped off the video or fell asleep by now, but that's okay. Maybe you can just rewind to the end. So two kings, matching splash, a Bate y La Mantilla brush, M1 razor with a Nasset blade. Thank you so much, Anthony Ferruli. I did enjoy the blade. I just gotta dial it in a little bit more. That's it, folks. Hope you enjoyed. God bless. See you next time.